historically, this was a salmon port. My dad and uncle grew up here in Fort Bragg. My grandfather was a logger. And at that time, you had two choices. You could either go to work in a logging industry or you went fishing. They started with a small boat. While they were still in school, they were able to buy a little bit bigger boat in a 30-foot class. And from the earnings from that, they were able to build their first boat. The 50s and 60s in the fishing industry were more wide open, and um, I'd say it was the, probably the heyday. You had multiple big processors coming in here and buying product from here. You know, not only that, but several different companies actually processed here. There were so many out-of-town boats fishing these northern stocks that the river was just clogged with boats. There was no slips available, harbors bustling, boats side tied three, four, five, six deep. By the early 70s, things started to cool down a little bit. The salmon fishery has been in decline because of all the environmental conditions that have been going on with the dams and then the levees and then the pumps. And then we got a double hit in the 90s when farm fish came onto production and we lost our stocks and our price. So the price just plummeted. Little by little, we've lost the infrastructure to support a fleet to harvest the resource that I believe we have here today. Growing up, my dad was a commercial fisherman. Pretty much all I've ever done was fish. I'm the owner operator of the fishing vessel Vernon Jean. We harvest ground fish, basically all the different species that live here and are available to us. And it can be a chili pepper rockfish, a bocacci rockfish, a dover sole, a ling cod, a black cod. It's gotten a lot more complicated and, and convoluted and, and more expensive to harvest the fish. So we formed what's called the Fort Bragg Groundfish Association because we could see that we were falling through the cracks and we were going to struggle, you know, with the new regulations. Now we have the opportunity to lease quota from Environmental Defense or Nature Conservancy to keep our boats fishing year-round. My home port is Fort Bragg and I'm a salmon fisherman at heart. To be a good fisherman nowadays, you have to be diversified. You have to have fishing opportunity. You have to have access to the stock. So I augment my salmon with albacore and black cod. And then when I've had to, you know, years past, I'll skipper the crab boat, you know, to make it work. 70% of my product still goes down to San Francisco and LA. I mean, I, my dream would be to catch and sell everything right here in Mendocino County. We're selling direct at our farmer's markets. We do a farmer's market in Santa Rosa, and we do one in Ukiah, and we do this Fort Bragg one here. So to know each fish so intimately, and then be able to see the person that's gonna take this fish home and prepare it in a beautiful, healthy meal, it makes the connection full circle. It's just so satisfying. We're trying to get the product out there so the people can taste it and you know realize that it's a valuable resource. A lot of it, instead of going overseas now, is starting to be consumed in California. And hopefully the trend continues to where uh, we can keep selling more fish. My husband and I own Wild Fish Restaurant. It's a tiny 10-table restaurant perched right on the headland um, overlooking the ocean, which gives us all a lot of inspiration to look out there and, and see where our fish comes from. We like to buy locally and we like to buy uh, sustainable food. We tell our fishermen, the more weird and wonderful, the more we're interested. So we're really trying to make available just what's around us here for local people and for visitors where it's very meaningful to eat like a local. I'm hopeful about the direction that fishing and marketing is going with what I see with the public's interest in where their food comes from. They want to know who caught it, how they caught it, you know, where it was processed, and all that interest leads to more careful practices on our end. I think when people start understanding more about their local fishing communities, they care more. And when you care more, you do more. And so I think that the role for the Noyo Center is to really help educate people and to help build trust back in the fishing community. There's a real need for organizations like ours to partner with fishermen 
to go out and collect data. There's a real win-win there. They feel a little bit more comfortable about the data that's going into their management and the management agencies can get more information than they would otherwise. So the Noyo Center has a role to play there as well. Today, I'm seeing fishing that looks like it did when I started in the 80s. I'm very optimistic that the resource is recovering and it's gonna be here for us. I just think it's our moral obligation to harvest this product as sustainably and cleanly as we possibly can. I think that we have sensitive habitat that we need to protect. I think that that's our responsibility.